In this video, I'll be using Affinity Photo to explain how to change keyboard shortcuts as well as add new ones. Whilst I'm using Affinity Photo, the process is the same in both Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher. If we look at the menu in Affinity Photo, you can see that some of the options have keyboard shortcuts assigned to them, which are listed on the right in grey. For example, if I hold down the Command key and press C on my keyboard, I can copy any selection to the computer clipboard. Keyboard shortcuts like this, though, are common across lots of software packages, so you probably don't want to change those, or you might become confused. But you'll also notice that some of the menu items don't actually have a keyboard shortcut assigned to them yet. If one of these is a command you use a lot, then you might want to consider assigning your own custom keyboard shortcut. A good example of this for me is applying the frequency separation filter, which I do a lot. Let's look at how to do this now in the Affinity Photo Preferences. When I click the Affinity Photo menu item, I can select the Preferences option. On a Windows PC, you'll find the Preferences under the Edit menu. You can also open the Preferences dialog using the keyboard shortcut of pressing Command and Comma together. On a Windows PC, that's the Control key and Comma. The Preferences dialog is organised into eight groups. This is the same in Affinity Designer and Publisher applications, although the groups may differ. You can then select the group to change by clicking the icon or choosing it from the drop-down list at the top left. We want to use the Keyboard Shortcuts group to create our custom shortcuts. After opening the Keyboard Shortcuts group, you'll see two drop-down lists at the top left of the dialog. In the first, you pick the persona that you want to edit the shortcuts for. As the frequency separation filter is part of the photo persona, I'll select photo in the drop-down. The second drop-down then lists the main menu options that you'll find along the top of that persona. As well as menus, it also lists the affinity tools in the persona that you've chosen. Many of the affinity tools also have keyboard shortcuts associated with them. For example, if I select the paintbrush tool, you can see the list has two shortcuts in it. These allow you to use the left and right square brackets to decrease and increase the size of the brush. If you want, you can change these to say using the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard instead. Now, before I make any changes to my keyboard shortcuts, I'm going to save my current settings. Then, if I mess things up, I can reload them from the file that I've saved. I could also use the Apple Defaults or Serif Default buttons to reset my keyboard shortcuts back to those defaults. But if I did that, I'd also lose my current custom shortcuts. That's why I'm starting by saving my settings by clicking the Save button. Then I can navigate to the folder where I want to save them. I have a folder set up for each of my Affinity applications where I save these settings too. I also add the current date to the start of the name so that I know when I saved it. Having done that, I'm now happy to make my changes to the keyboard shortcuts. As the frequency separation filter is part of the filter menu, I'll choose that in the second drop down. You can now see the different filters listed, and if I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the entry for frequency separation. I'll set this to use the keyboard shortcut of Shift, Command and F by clicking the empty field and then pressing those keys together on my keyboard. Affinity Photo then recalls the keys in the field, but notice this has a yellow warning triangle next to it. This is a warning that the keyboard shortcut I've just entered is already being used elsewhere in Affinity. When I hover my mouse pointer over the field, it lists the conflicting entries, which in this case is Fade. Rather than risk making lots of shortcut changes to different personas, I'll choose a different shortcut, which is Shift and F. This time, there isn't a warning triangle, so I'm good to use that. Now, I want you to notice the Apply to All option below the second drop-down. This is an important time saver when creating custom keyboard shortcuts. You probably already know that Affinity products use personas, and that each persona has its own set of menus. Whilst the menus are different in each persona, it's quite possible some elements are repeated. If you want to use the same keyboard shortcut across all personas, you need to find and edit every menu entry. But by ticking the Apply to All option, it's done automatically for you. 
After making your changes, click the Close button to close the Preferences dialog. If we then check the Filter menu, we can see the new shortcut we've just created. Now, there's something else that I want to share with you, which is about setting up keyboard shortcuts for plugins in Affinity Photo. As you might know, you can run some Photoshop plugins inside of Affinity Photo. A good example of this is the Nick collection, which contains plugins like Viveza and Silver Effects Pro. If we look at the menu, none of these have keyboard shortcuts assigned to them. Let's open the Affinity Photo Preferences again and try to create a shortcut for Nick Silver Effects Pro. I'll press Command and Comma to open the dialog. Then, in the Filters menu, I'll find the plugin entry. But there isn't an entry for that plugin. If you want to load the plugin filters into the list, you need to do something very specific. The first step to this is to quit and then restart Affinity Photo. Once Affinity Photo restarts, open an image before you do anything else. After opening an image, create a duplicate layer for that image. Then apply one of your plugin filters to that layer. I don't know if this step is essential, but it's the only way that I could get this to work consistently. You can then reopen the Preferences dialog and check the keyboard shortcuts. You should now find the table as populated with a list of your plugins. Unfortunately, that's as far as I've been able to take this currently. It looks like there's a bug here, or at least there is on my Mac. Notice that all my plugins are listed as being part of the Alien Skin folder, but they aren't. Also, if I assign a shortcut to the plugin, the warning appears suggesting the same shortcut has been applied to all the plugin filters. I won't go any further at this point because trying to use the new shortcut crashes Affinity Photo. If anyone has managed to get this working, please do let me know in the YouTube comments below and exactly what you did to do this. Despite this hiccup though, the ability to define your own keyboard shortcuts is a powerful feature in Affinity products. It's also great to be able to run Photoshop plugins in Affinity Photo. If you want to know how to set that up, watch this video next. It explains the key steps you'll need to follow. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon in another video.